So you've come here, you figured out that you need to extend Pocketbase. You've come to the right place. JavaScript is a great starting point for being able to do that. And the easiest way to show you how extending is, is to do it. So first off, I'd recommend you download a copy of Pocketbase. And the way that you can do that is go down to the GitHub releases for Pocketbase and select the architecture that you're using. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to download the version, which is in the M1, M2, M3, M4. It's going to have that, so I'm going to download that. The next thing we're going to do is go to our code. In my case, I've already got the executable copied directly to this file here. And we're going to firstly create some files. So let's go to new folder first, and we'll create a folder called pd hooks. And our pd underscore hooks file is where we create the actual JS extension. We're going to create a file under here called main.pd.js. And this main.pd.js file is going to be the file that stores all of your hooks. This is the actual extending part of Pocketbase. Next, we're going to want to go into a terminal. We're going to change into our actual directory where we've got Pocketbase there and clear all of this. And we're going to start up Pocketbase. And we can do that by going Pocketbase serve, and that will spin up a lovely instance of Pocketbase that we can use. So now that we've got that, we'll jump into our arc. We'll set up our admin account. Gotta love Pocketbase, just how easy it is to set up anything. And that's great. Now we've got that set up, we can look at exactly how to extend. So extending Pocketbase is going to happen under this main.bp pb.js. And the simplest extension that we can have is to add in a router. And if you have this reference path, which should already be created for you, which shows all of the types, you already get an example out of the box. So we'll just go ahead and add this example in. We can see that we've got this API is required or well, all this really does is it basically says that whenever someone is calling this specific route, it needs to have an authorization header with the bearer token, which will be, it'll look something actually a lot like this. So you just need to make sure that when you're testing in Postman, you have that in. But for the sake of this, we're just going to remove this require auth and we're just going to save. And we'll see that our PB file is actually being changed, has caused a restart of the entire Pocketbase instance. And this is by design. It restarts Pocketbase to automatically refresh whenever this main.pb file is changed. So let's go back to our browser and take a look exactly how that's going to look. So if we change this up here, we'll remember that looking actually at the code that we had, it was hello was the, the route that we created and it creates it directly on, on our instance, which is amazing. And of course, if we go into our cursor again, and we just update the message that is produced, we can say, hello, early morning, and we can see that our instance is refreshing there. And then when we do our refresh here, it comes up immediately. So this is as simple as it gets when it comes to a pocket base extension. Very cool stuff. I think that the problem that you're going to encounter is that when you're in production, oftentimes this hook file will be being updated a lot. And it's kind of hard to update that on the fly if you're doing something like a Docker image. Therefore, you have to mess around with networking to make this easy to deploy. Or you can use a hosted option for prototyping like I do, like Pocket Host, where you can get a simple FTP endpoint out of the box that you can use. Let's jump in and see how easy that is to set up. So my favorite way of setting this up is to use SFTP within the S code because it's super simple to configure. And I'll show you just how easy if we go to our command palette, which you can go to by pressing control P or command P, depending on what OS you're on, and then go into SFTP config, we automatically get a file like this basically out of the box. And we're going to update it with the settings in pocket host. So we know it's going to be FTP, and I believe that the port is 21. The username is developer at biz365.com. I'm going to just save that. The host should be ftp.pockethost.im. You can save that. And then once we've entered in these details, we can do the following, which is SFTP list. 
we can choose the server, my server, and this will bring up a list of different things that we can use. We're gonna go with JS Extend, which is the instance that we've created directly with Pocket Host and go choose current folder. And that's gonna download our folder directly here. Now it says here that the instance must be powered off first. So we'll go to Arc, we'll power off the instance to begin with, and we'll go back to cursor, and then we'll just make sure that we sync from remote to local. It should pull down the remote changes. And you'll notice that we don't have a main PB file here. So we're just going to create that by going main.pb.js. And that's given us our main.pb.js file on the extend. And we're going to make sure that these settings come through and get populated. So we'll just close out of this. And then we will go back and turn on our instance in Arc. And then we'll double check on our access link. Oh, we can change this file here. We are live save that and SFTP will handle that automatically so that it gets automatically published and deployed, which fixes your CI CD. So if you can see for prototyping how quick these changes can come through, it's, it's going to be freaking amazing for you if this is your first time doing this. And when we refresh, we see that we're live. So I think that this is a crazy, crazy cool way of developing simple FTP, simple hosting. But there's a question, why are we doing all this in the first place? And I think that the times when I've had to extend have been for a few reasons. The first being payments. Payments is often a big chore and it's something that Pocketbase doesn't have out of the box. If you are interested in Pocketbase Stripe, I have a hook file which I built directly into it, which allows you to get out of the box Stripe. So hugely, hugely powerful. The other thing is, is you might have a feature like what I had to build for Pets Mates, which is I needed a way that I could group geolocation data and Pocket Base didn't have that out of the box. So I had to build it. There might be other functions that you need where you need to retrieve your records within the SQLite in a certain way and you don't get that. That's where I would say this comes in. Now, there are some caveats with extending. For starters, you might think that, oh, well, you know, Node.js libraries and packages will work straight out of the box with extending JavaScript. That's not the case here because you see Pocket Base is actually a Go wrapper around SQLite. And Go is a funny one. It doesn't actually have anything to do with Node.js. Node.js is an engine for running JavaScript code. And because of that, we have to find some way of running JavaScript code. And, and the way that we do that with Pocketbase is using the JavaScript virtual machine, which is a way of executing JavaScript code through Go and interfacing with the Go API. This brings with it the challenge that no Node.js package will actually work straight out of the box. You have to re basically rebuild it so that it has very little reliance on Node.js because it doesn't use Node.js as the JavaScript virtual machine, it uses Goja as its engine. So any packages that you want cannot rely on Node.js's underlying APIs. So what's an example of this? Node.js has a file service, which it uses. You might have used it before, which allows you to create files or the rest of it. In Pocketbase, because we're using Goja, we have to build equivalents to that. So any package which relies on FS from NPM is not going to work. So this is one thing to consider with building this way is you're going to have a lot of reliance on native JavaScript without any, using any underlying APIs from, from the engine. And yeah, our JS VM is what hosts our main.pb.js and any other pb.js files. And yeah, the JavaScript virtual machine communicates with Pocketbase and has APIs in order to do that. If you go to the docs for Pocketbase, that's where you'll see all, everything that can be done in extending. So it's usually powerful. I would say that the other reason to extend really comes down to the fact that you don't want to be in a Next.js trap. So one of the things which I hate about Next.js is the fact that you've got your front end, which is essentially just your web client talking with a back end and then your backend ends up talking to a database. So most of the time when you're using Pocketbase, you've actually got two backends. There's no reason for this. Um, and so that's where extending comes in because you can do everything that you do on Next.js backend, like the APIs, you can do that directly from 
pocket base. The disadvantage to this is probably that you're going to run into a, a time where you're wanting to get better performance and better latency globally. Next.js allows you the ability to do that. Pocket Base does not allow, allow you the ability to do that because it's only hosted in one place. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. If you are building in Pocket Base, I recommend that you check out Fast Pocket. It's the easiest way to build a front end for your Pocket Base app because it is using Astro. It's very simple and for extending with JavaScript, it's super, super easy. You get Stripe out of the box. It's compatible with Daisy 5, Tailwind 4, all of that goodness. I'll see you guys in the next one.